So, in this section, we will talk about the eukaryotic genes. Uh, eukaryotic genes are relatively complicated. They are not as simple as prokaryotic genes. In eukaryotes, uh, the genes have exons and introns. Exons are protein coding regions and uh, exons are uh, spaced uh, um, uh, with from one another uh, and in between them there are the introns. So, during the gene expression both exons and introns they are uh, first transcribed into uh, messenger RNA and then later on the introns are uh, removed out and in the end the remaining structure we call it as ORF. Uh, introns, uh, they contribute uh, very little in uh, yeast or there are only uh, 239 introns in the genomes, whereas in humans, uh, there may be up to 95 percent of the genome. So, uh, they can stay in the same location and uh, sometimes introns also have uh, some embedded genes in them. Uh, introns can be distinguished uh, by the presence of uh, GT at their uh, 5 prime end whereas uh, uh, AG on uh, their 3 prime end. Here is the structure of a typical eukaryotic gene. We see there is a chromosome and gene is the region where we can see some specific patterns. So, we can see there is a promoter region. Then uh, there is the start of transcription. So, transcription starts from here and ends at this point. So, uh, this whole region is then uh, transcribed into messenger RNA. So, then we see the blue ones are exons and those orange ones are introns. There is a 5 prime UTR region. So, this this end of the of the uh, gene is 5 prime end and this is 3 prime end. So, towards 5 prime end we have a 5 prime UTR. So, that UTR means uh, this uh, UTR stands for untranslated region. So, this region is transcribed into messenger RNA but no protein comes from here. So, that region stays as untranscribed. The same way towards 3 prime end we also have a 3 prime UTR. When we look into the ORF, so that is the region between a start codon or initiator till stop codon and then in between them uh, we can see there are a different number of amino acids mentioned here, here and here. So, these are the regions uh, from which translation takes place and we get a protein. This uh, after transcription, uh, the transcript is called as primary transcript. So, here we can see that primary transcript has containing those introns also, which are later on removed through a process called as splicing and then we find a mature RNA transcript. So, that transcript then is translated into the proteins. So, this uh, messenger RNA transcript, uh, which is the mature transcript is also recognized by the presence of a poly A tail. So, there is a long run of A's in the end it is called as poly A tail. So, about the origin of intron, introns, there are two theories. Number one is intron early. So, according to this the introns uh, they used to assemble the genes from already existing exons. So, they brought the exons together and then these uh, structures they became the genes. And there is another hypothesis that the exons was already uh, present with one another and then introns they get into them. So, that is called as intron late hypothesis. Uh, now, we talk about the degree of compactness. So, these uh, the compact genomes, the genomes in which the size is small, you know, the relative proportion of the genes is higher. So, that contributes to the uh, gene density. So, we can say that compact genomes are having more gene densities. We can look into this table right here. So, here we have different genomes, mostly eukaryotes and we see that the size of the genome in Arabidopsis is 130 MB and the number of genes is approximately 25,000. E. coli, one prokaryote bacteria is here, genome size is 4.7 and there are over 4,000 genes. In humans, the genome size is 3,000 MB. MB here is not megabytes, it is um, megabase pairs. So, we have 45,000 to expected genes, uh, which is actually 45,000 to 120,000, though around slightly over 30,000 they have been identified. So, if we look into those smaller organisms like the organisms which are having those smaller genomes and if we take the number of genes and divide that into the uh, genome size, we will see that they have more densities as compared to the larger genomes.
Pseudo genes are non-functional genes, so sometimes there are some mutations in the genes and if those mutations are there in some important regions and then those genes, uh, their functions, they get knocked out. So we call those genes as pseudo genes. Uh, there is one category called as process pseudo genes, so they lack introns and promoters as well. Here is a the diagram in which we see that from a normal gene, uh, there is a pseudo gene which is formed here. So we look into its five prime end. So there is a region in which those 23 bases, they have been deleted. In addition to that, initiation codon. So those bases are deleted from the promoter region. So promoter must have some important patterns in, in that. So in this case, these deletions are lethal. Same way in the start codon, we see rather than ATG, it's GTG. We also see mutations in the splice sites rather than GT, it's GC. Again here, we also see some other small deletions. So in the end, we see in exon 2, there are other 20 bases which are also being deleted. So in this way, this normal gene has become now a pseudo gene. Sometimes the genes, uh, they uh, have similar sequences and they have similar functions. So if we try to find out the similar genes within an organisms, are between different organisms. So those group of genes performing similar functions, they can be categorized as gene families. So gene families, they arise uh, from gene uh, duplication events. Here is the example of gene duplication. Uh, we have human globin gene. So first duplication gave rise to two types of globins. One is myoglobins and then we have globins on one side and within the globins we also see alpha and beta globins. So this process is called as uh, gene duplication. So in the end we conclude that eukaryotic genes have exons and introns in them and introns make up significant proportion of the, uh, of the higher organisms genomes and pseudo genes are non-functional genes and the genes which are similar in function uh, they make up the gene families.